We're going to look very briefly at what's possible with dynamic designer motion inside of Solid Edge. We're starting with this assembly of a four bar mechanism. So this is Solid Edge, the modeling environment, or assembly environment rather. And you can see there is one degree of freedom in this assembly. So we can drag it and it can rotate. Now we're going to use that to simulate some motion. And we'll come over here to tools. And this is the icon for the motion environment. So now we're in the motion environment and we need to create a new mechanism in order to run a simulation. So new mechanism, just call it the default name. And it says, do we want to automatically add new parts to grounded or moving parts? And we'll just say yes and see how that goes. And here's a notification saying what it did, blah, blah, blah. So we have this part is grounded and then the rest of these are moving. Now we're going to add motion to a joint. So these joints were automatically created based on the constraints inside of the assembly. So we have axial aligns and um, mate constraints and those are synonymous with a revolute joint. I'm going to add um, motion to this revolute joint, so this will be the driving joint, and you just click through to find it. I don't know if, you, well, I'll zoom in a little bit. So you can see whenever you click on one, it'll become green over in the window. So this one is revolute 3, and we're going to right click and properties to add motion. Okay, the z-axis is the axis that it uh, rotates about, so that's the local z-axis and motion type will be um, velocity. So we'll add constant velocity to that joint. And then we will simulate it. So this is gonna be a one second long simulation. That's the default length. 50 frames, one second long. Mm, so when it says frames, that just means the number of times that the, the output is updated. The simulation could have a much smaller time step than 1 50th of a second. Now here's the button to run a simulation and that doesn't look quite right. So what happened? Uh, well we only have one, pe one part grounded, we need two. So this other ground part, we'll change that to ground part or you could just drag it from moving parts to grounded ground parts. But anyway, now they're both grounded and we can rerun the simulation. Okay, there's the motion that we were expecting. So you can see one complete revolution of the assembly. Now, our assembly is done and we can replay it if we want. We could drag this to a different time during the simulation and replay it from there. We can also create plots. So let me just create one plot. We're gonna go to the joint that we added the motion to and plot the rotary motion generator and we're going to plot the moment in the z direction. So this is the torque that was required from that motion. Or if we had a motor, a geared motor connected to that joint, this would be the torque required from that motor to get the mechanism to rotate one revolution. Oops. Um, okay, so there's one kind of quirk here. So I, I plotted the moment in the z direction, but these moments are relative to the world coordinate system. So I need to plot um, moments in the y direction. Even though when we specified the motion it was a rotation about the z-axis, now this is the moment about the y-axis because these moments are in the y are in the world coordinate frame and the motions displacements were in the local joint frame. There we go. So there's moment in the y-axis for that rotation that we simulated.